rest assured that anybody who owns a home uh, in First Light currently, um, that will be refunded to you. All your furniture will be moved to the storage unit, but rest assured you will get all of that back. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Forged in Eternum, the show where we talk all things New World. My name is Rob, and I am joined today by Katie and Johannes, joining us for the first time for Forged in Eternum. Yay! Welcome, Johannes. Wow. Yeah, super <laughs> glad to have Johannes. Uh, and today we wanted to talk about uh, season two, and uh, when when that goes live, uh, there will be some changes for players. They will discover that First Light, the zone that uh, that's one of our early starter zones, is no longer accessible. Uh, and that's because the world is changing. But what exactly is happening? Yeah, so um, we'll talk about a little bit of the lore in just a second. But uh, I know that people are going to be wondering, what happened to my stuff? <laughs> um, <laughs> and and a lot of people are wondering, what happened to my fort buff? Mm -hmm. um, so rest assured that anybody who owns a home uh, in First Light currently, um, that will be refunded to you. All your furniture will be moved to the storage unit. There's still First Light storage that exists. You won't be able to put anything in it, but you'll be able to take everything out of it. So that will all be available to you. Um, if you own that territory, you'll be refunded. Um, and then the, the First Light Fort bonus, which everybody fights over, it's like First Light Fight Club, mm -hmm. um, that will be moved. So we'll have more information on that in the patch notes, but rest assured, you will get all of that back. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and so now let's, Dig into the lore a little bit, because yeah. I did my part. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so players who played through the main story will, of course, remember that uh, Adiana was this uh, mysterious huntress who joined players and uh, and helped them out a little bit in forging the Razoth staff and becoming a soul warden. Um, and eventually in the story, the players have to kind of cross Adiana in their fight against corruption. Um, they, they start getting hints early on that Adiana may not be uh, exactly just what she appears to be, like this mm -hmm. mysterious human huntress. And then in Brimstone Sands, we learned that uh, she is actually an ancient. She's the ancient known as Artemis, and she is very, very mad about what players did in uh, poisoning the mother well in the main story. I mean, we did what we had to do. Yeah. So it's it just <laughs> kind of f***ed up a little bit, you know? <laughs> it's, it's classic player moves. I'm like, I'm going to do the, oh, no. Oh no, what did I do? And it's a very fun carrot that we've kind of put in front of the player to lead them through these stories and be able to surprise folks and build a more chaotic entry into gods. Yeah, no, as a storyteller, I always love the opportunity to, to give the player the chance to contradict. Mm -hmm. In fact, we kind of force you to contradict what the NPC is telling you. You know, so often quests are just like, hey, go do this thing. In this case, she's like, no, absolutely not. Do not go do that thing. And then the players go and do it. And uh, and so it feels fun. And of course, that's why the players have created the scenario that's now looking like it may turn into an apocalypse. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because First Light, Adiana has invaded First Light with the Angry Earth. Now she's revealed to be Artemis. Um, and there's this bramble wall that's gone up um, around it. And so players can't even see what's going on in there. Um, yeah, and you'll get you hear glimpses of weird things happening if you listen closely when you're by it, and I think you can see like just a little bit through some of the vines, but it's, yeah, you can see the vegetation, yeah. but there's definitely a lot more waiting beyond than vegetation. <laughs> <laughs> All vegetables. This is vegetarian now. Oh, yeah. huh. oh, oh no. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> and then the, and then the vegetation is of course changing because part of what you know Adiana is doing, she's I mean she's changing the world here. She has a vision of what the world will look like. When you know, humanity, who she is determined is the weak link that uh, that keeps allowing corruption back into the world, and she said, "If we want to fight corruption forever, we got to get rid of humanity." And so her vision of this totally, world that is, make, yeah, just yeah. direct line. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that makes sense. Humans are responsible for all the evils, particularly from the perspective of they nature. They do keep getting corrupted too, so it's angry Earth don't get corrupted. No. So Mother Earth is, is a very Kant view of looking at the world. <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> it, it is. Uh, and she, gives, she even gives you a lecture about the, uh, the human ego and how it makes you so susceptible to corruption because you're so easily tricked into, uh, into false pride. And, uh, you know, I believe it because a lot of our players have said that they want to play for the corruption. So, <laughs> I mean, Isabella is a really 
really tempting individual to follow. It's true. She's a very strong leader. Yeah. And she was one of the first ones that we did a cinematic for mm -hmm. when we, um, at the, in Tempest. So there's one that plays at the very end, and that was our foray into it. And do we get any with Adiana? Uh, yeah, surprise. Um, yes, uh, we got a couple that. like simple ones in Brimstone Sands, but mm -hmm. uh, but with First Light, without giving away too much, um, there will certainly be you know some pretty awesome scenes to show off like her transition to this arch villain, to show you more about her plans, um, and even to show you some of the allies she's recruited to her side that are very interesting new characters onto the scene. Yeah, that's super awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and then of course we have the uh, one of the things that is is there even right away as season two goes live is that some of the characters who were in First Light who you you may or may not remember some of the, the survivalists survivalists riches uh, Constable Oaks who mm -hmm. could forget Oaks and Riches I who? couldn't yeah <laughs> I couldn't how could you <laughs> um, just don't forget and uh, so those characters uh, at least a couple of them have actually escaped from first light before the brown ball ball went up and if you hunt them down I think particular uh, uh, barkeep Gunter Rost is uh, is out there and uh, may give you a little bit more detail on mm -hmm. what's going on behind the bramble wall and uh, and then later on uh, we might have to find you know out what happened to the rest of the folks in first light might might be kind of grisly is it are they okay? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh no. I mean, nobody dies on a turnum, right? Exactly. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. So they are okay. Unless like, she's figured out some way to like. Oh my gosh, it's all, all. <laughs> it's all him. Well, <laughs> it's not me. It's her. She did this. Like that's the thing. Once you create a character, she runs away. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. She made these choices right. yeah. all by herself. And it's Isabella's fault. So like, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm really just an observer. Blame, blame here. Isabella. It's it's always. Her, you yeah. know, honestly, though, for a really long time, it very much was Isabel. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. It's nice to have a new flavor of powerful mm -hmm. individuals stepping in and kind of taking some of that spotlight away from Isabella. Yeah, I mean, I think Isabella had a had a solid motivation, but I, I what I love about Atiana's motivation is that she, it does have to do with the player's own actions. It has a very it's it's grounded in this sense mm -hmm. of like, hey, like mankind is a defiled nature. Yeah, they deserve what's coming to them. Um, so she's a very sympathetic villain. I think it's worth pointing out that we we uh, we need some more male arch villains in our game. I, we've even been called out. Hey, there's a lot of uh, really cruel females here. Um, I don't know where that came from. It definitely wasn't me. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> no, you just no. tell me what you want, and I do my job. No, the uh, we've got some. I mean, Thorpe, yeah. but you know, Thorpe doesn't quite. I think he's not as tough as Isabella. I mean, he's um, not as tough as it can be. Yeah, he's getting better though. Yeah, <laughs> he's been. He's he's getting some cinematic. He's gone stuff through it. He has. Thorpe has through gone it. through it. Yeah. I mean, he's still like the most iconic symbol of the game. I think. Oh, definitely. Um, and I know that players want to fight him again mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But how do we bring him back again? Like, how many times do you have to fight him? I think we've got three times in the game <laughs> right now. Do it again. <laughs> but he's got to get more intimidating. So we got to. I yeah. think we we hinted in the uh, end of the Tempest Reckoning how yeah. what his fate may be in the future. Yeah. Um, and that's fun stuff to play with going forward. And of course, we'll have like once the expansion goes live, players will get to go behind the Bramble Wall and see what's actually transpired in First Light. Yeah. Um, the zone may even have a new name. Um, I don't it know. May. <laughs> it, it may. It and, and, you know, may. Why I mean, would Adiana I, keep First Light? Right. It's she a, wouldn't. It's a name that it she will. can just do whatever she wants. <laughs> exactly. She's a goddess. Exactly. Well, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, th what we're doing here is suggesting that the world's evolving as the result of the player's actions. These mm -hmm. are big changes. An entire zone has changed over, and a new story takes place there. Um, and, you know, this is, it'll be interesting to see how players react to this and if they like this kind of thing, and we get to do more of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's been a lot of fun, especially uh, getting all the talent back into the booth to record. We, we allow them to do some degree of line changes as we're doing records because they know the characters so well. They've lived in those characters for over two years now, like especially our Artemis voice actress. See, she's an absolute black mm -hmm. Yeah, she yes. is so good. Uh, and she just gets it. You sit in and go, hey, here's what we're doing. She goes, oh, I get to be the villain now. And she just <laughs> sinks into it That's and you can awesome. see her enjoying and like believing what she's saying. It's more than just putting on a performance. Like it, there, there's weight and gravity to it, so I'm I'm very stoked to actually like hear her in the space, see all the different ways that she's changed things, and like 
how she's progressed through the stories. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And that's each time we do like these major revamps like we were doing to the MSQ or that we continue to do it with the MSQ. Yeah. Um, and every time we do something big like this, it's going to be those, you know, that talent getting in there. I Bring didn't know back. actually that they go in and they kind of like adjust based mm -hmm. on what they think that the character would do, but that's awesome. Yeah, and that's really cool. It brings more believability to the characters, makes them feel much more human and easier to sympathize with. And it's not as artificial as like, oh, well, this sounds good on paper. Yeah, but it's well, not and, always and when we get actors who are you know different ethnicities or heritage, like sometimes we've had an Irish actress come in and be like, oh no, that's not the way an Irish person <laughs> would say this. That's awesome. Let me tell you, and she's yes. she's helped us get the lines better. I love that. Um, so I think it's a, it's always a fun process. Yeah. It's creative input from all around. It's, yeah. it's all valid. It's all super helpful, and it makes the end product a lot better. Yeah, mm, very definitely, cool. Definitely. Yeah. So all that going on for season two. Um, I think we close now with a community question. Um, and I think our community question we want to go with is uh, what other uh, storytelling beats, what other aspects of the lore are you most interested in hearing about? Um, and uh, just let us know, and we'll, uh, we'll answer those questions in time. And make sure to like and subscribe if you like what we're talking about, because we'll keep doing it. <laughs> now, though, those quest uh, givers, they'll move with you. So if they send you to somewhere, they're probably going to tag along. Uh, using season two as an example, now you're plugging up geysers to unlock secret chambers. You're placing crystals to unlock maps that'll tell you where to go. Like it's much more more in depth, and uh, I think it really helps sell our narrative uh, in a really good way.